Question one, did you start out as a freelancer or did you have an agency job before? So I started by working uh, part-time in different agencies as a graphic designer or as an illustrator. And then whilst I was working in my last place for a couple of years, I went part-time quite quickly, which allowed me to do a bit of a mix between freelance work and uh, agency work. What are the best and worst pieces of feedback you ever received and how did you handle them? Okay, let's start with the bad ones. I think anything related to changing the body shape of my characters can be a little bit of a tricky feedback because sometimes it's completely fair and I adapt my work depending on the client. Like if I'm working for Nike or Adidas, of course I'm gonna be creating a range of body uh, that are more or less fit and I will change my character slightly because it has to, you know, it has to work out with the brief. But when the feedback is kind of more of like on a personal level, they prefer to see a thinner character. I, I try to very gently explain that I think actually it's nice to see a variety of shapes and, and that, you know, it's something that I actually try to push, uh, in my work. So that's a tricky feedback to receive. It's a bit of a frustrating one to receive sometimes. And then best feedback will always be when the work I've created either for a client or just for, you know, for myself and posted it has created an emotion that I wanted to, you know, the sort of the audience to feel because it means they get it and it means that I, I managed to put the right message through and that's really lovely to hear. What client project are you most proud of and which did you enjoy the most? The one that I'm the most proud of uh, because of just the magnitude of it is probably Kiehl's when I did the Christmas campaign because it's the biggest project I've worked on in the sense that there were so many, so many illustrations and it was being used in, in, in their entire campaign. And they had such a strong vision of what the end product would be because they knew their product so well and the, the, the quality of the printing and the production. Whereas sometimes I was going a little bit blind thinking, oh my God, is this, <laughs> is this going to look good or not? Uh, but in the end, it looked great and it was really impressive to see the whole, you know, the whole campaign come to life. So that was the, that was my favorite project so far. What's one of the most frustrating or difficult parts of the industry? There's quite a few, <laughs> but I think for this one, um, making sure that your clients keep up with your work and your journey can be quite difficult because, you know, you post all these things online and of course you're going to update your website and you're going to update your social media, but your work is always out there. And I sometimes find myself, you know, having to sort of convince potential clients who come in with really old work and be like, well, no, actually what I'm doing now is much better. And you should, you know, we should do something more along, you know, along that route than what I was doing previously so that you keep evolving, not only in your private personal projects, but also with your client work. How did your work transition from 2D to 3D? For this, it was a vision that I had of a sense of volume that I really wanted to portray through my characters. Throughout my illustration, my characters are already very, they're very bubbly, they're very voluptuous, they have this shine and this sort of bubbly aspect of them almost being ready to pop. But there was a restriction to how much I could do by staying, uh, you know, working in a 2D illustration. And I really wanted to push it further. I really wanted that sense of volume that I was imagining in my head. And so by finding the right 3D designer to collaborate with, we then managed to sort of have that translation between 2D to 3D. And it was exactly what I was picturing, which was this really curvy and round character that I, you know, I love to represent so much. Where did you get the inspiration for the colors you use and how does the palette affect the outcome? I have a bit of a weird relationship with my color palette because I started when I was at uni and studying art. I really didn't know how to use colors. I was really bad at, you know, at making it work or finding a palette that I thought was working nicely. So for a couple of years, really, I did most of my work in black and white. And then when, when I was ready to go freelance and, and suddenly I knew I needed to add color again, I, I think it came quite naturally because I had avoided colors for so long that I was ready to then, you know, try to find something that would work. And then because it was more about the feeling that I wanted to give through my artwork that guided me to the palette, I think it, that's why it's easy, even up until now. The colors are really like a way to express something about my work, having really vibrant colors to make it energetic and then having more of a softer palette to make it more round and 
and bubbly and, and soft. I'm really saying something specific through my colors and I think that's why it's easy for me to pick them. But yeah, I did struggle a lot at the beginning. Um, so, you know, it's really something that takes a little bit of time, but then once you, once you find your palette, then it's a great feeling and it's a great way to really show your identity. What's the most important thing you learned to turn freelancing into a stable career? I think there's a couple of things. I think that being confident in your work is definitely a huge aspect because you're not going to get all the projects that you pitch for. There's going to be quite a lot of disappointment, but you just have to understand that that's part of the deal and that you have to sort of always keep going and keep going forward. Then obviously reaching out to the, to, to the right places, the right clients and agencies that you like, producing work and then making sure that it's out there and that it's, it's being viewed by the right people. And then obviously also try to keep good relationships with the people you've worked with, portray yourself as someone who's reliable and, and serious to work with. I think that's definitely a good thing for them to refer you to other pla people or places or to work with them again. And that's a, a good way to start getting a, uh, a good flow of work and, uh, and building up your, your clients and your portfolio. How do you navigate the balance between commercial and artist work? It really depends on the, the situation. Sometimes it's just, it, it's just natural. There's going to be phases where I have a lot of client work. Therefore, automatically, I don't have really so much time to work on um, personal project. But then quite often enough, there's going to be another period during that same year where I'm not going to have a lot of client work. Therefore, I have the time to really um, start working on a personal project and start doing something new for myself or for my shop or just as a personal series or an exhibition. Then the periods that are a bit half and half, I usually just structure myself, structure my week where there's going to be three days where I'm being serious and I'm doing all the client work and commercial work. And then one or two day when I'm just allowing myself to have a bit of a day off uh, where I'm just going to work on something purely for the fun of it or for the creativity of it. There's, there's rarely a time where I will really have to choose between one or the other. I usually can fit both of them by just structuring my week a little bit. Mm -hmm.